One of the verbs that the Buddha uses to talk about our relationship to ourselves is that we're resolved on ourself. We can either be enthusiastically resolved, in the sense that we really like ourself, or attached to our wants, attached to our thoughts, attached to however we identify ourselves. Or we can be resolved in a negative way. We look at ourselves, we don't like our habits, we don't like the way we interact with the world. We see how we create a lot of trouble. We're negatively resolved on ourselves. We'd like to see our sense of self abolished. And if you come to the practice of the Dharma with that kind of resolve, either negative or positive, the issue of self becomes a really big deal. When you hear about the teachings on not-self, if you're already positively attached to yourself, it's going to sound very negative. If you're already negatively attached to yourself, it's going to encourage you in your negativity, neither of which is healthy, neither of which is the way to put an end to the cravings that lead to becoming. We need to be focused on something else, resolved on something else. Take the issue of self and put it aside. find something else to become the center of our attention. This is where the Buddha raises the issue of skillful and unskillful actions. That's what he says. It's one of his categorical teachings, the teachings that are true across the board, and the ones that he wants to make the center of your attention. How can you develop skillful qualities, and how can you abandon unskillful qualities? So the attention gets focused on the skill and the qualities of mind that you bring to the skill. As you practice virtue, as you practice concentration, as you practice discernment, you want to develop each of these into a skill. Issues of self get pushed off to the side. This is why when the Buddha described his own awakening, he didn't describe it as awakening to the three characteristics. It was awakening to the Four Noble Truths. Four Noble Truths are all about skill, the skill of abandoning craving, the skill of developing the path. The same with his first listeners, the five monks. His first teaching to them was the Four Noble Truths about skillful action, how to abandon craving, how to develop the factors of the path. He didn't even mention to them the topic of not-self until after they'd gained the Dharma, after they'd gained stream entry. Sometimes we're told that stream entry is when you see that there is no self. But if that were the case, why would he have taught them not-self afterwards? Stream entry is when you see the deathless. You see the deathless by getting more and more sensitive to how you fabricate your experience. Until you begin to reflect on what it means to fabricate an experience. In other words, looking at the question of skillful and unskillful actions. So that becomes the focus. That's where you're resolved. Where resolve is not resolved on deconstructing your sense of self. It's resolved on Renunciation, non ill will, harmlessness. Renunciation isn't just giving up things, it means looking for your happiness in a way that's not involved with sensuality. That requires that you work on the skills of concentration. Same with ren being resolved on non ill will. You want to make sure that you have good will for yourself, good will for others. Or if you can't muster good will, work on equanimity. And being resolved on harmlessness. Again, finding your happiness in ways that don't cause long-term harm to anybody. This relates to the practice of virtue. It's 
So right resolve is basically taking the insights that come from the Four Noble Truths and applying them to your practice of virtue and concentration. And the discernment that sees that goodwill is the way to go. In other words, really working on doing this as skillfully as you can. Because you see that the skillfulness of your action, that's going to make the difference between happiness and suffering. So you focus on that issue, that becomes a central issue. And you try to bring the kind of qualities that will make that focus as solid as possible. Like you're doing your own Copernican revolution. Copernicus took the center of the universe, moved it from the earth to the sun. Solved a lot of problems. Of course, you find really, ultimately, there is no center to the universe at all. But the moving of the center was the first step in the right direction. And here, you want to make that first step by moving your focus of awareness, your resolves away from your sense of self, and into the question of being really good at becoming skillful in how you approach your thoughts, how you approach your words, how you approach your deeds. The texts often talk about three qualities that make this resolve on skillfulness really solid. You're ardent, heedful, resolute. Heedful in the sense that you see how important it is to act in skillful ways. That if your actions are unskillful, there's going to be suffering. If you're more skillful, you can avoid a lot of unnecessary suffering. You want to take that principle to heart. Then you want to be ardent. This is basically related to right effort. Ardent in abandoning what's unskillful. Ardent in preventing it from arising if you can. Ardent in giving rise to skillful qualities and ardent in developing them as far as you can take them. And resolute is you stick with this all the time. In John Fuang's terms, you make your practice timeless. The question as you go through the day always is, what's the skillful thing to do now? And you learn to see that question is having a lot of promise. Because after all, many times the skillful thing to do is to get the mind still, settle down, get on familiar terms with your breath, on familiar terms with your body as you feel it from within. That's a good place to be. And then you try to maintain that sense of center regardless of what is going on around you. So you move the resolve from being centered on you, who you are, what you are, to the question of skill in your thoughts, words, and deeds. And as things get really skillful in your concentration, and as your discernment gets sharper, you begin to think in ways that can help take apart the things that distract you. Here again we have that five-step program that the Buddha set out. You look at things that are disturbing the mind and you see where they're originated from how they cease, how they pass away when the origination ceases. You see the connections of cause and effect. You see they're just events happening. Why is it that you're so taken with them? Why is it that you build a sense of self and a sense of the world around them? What's the allure? When you can see the allure, then you try to compare it with the drawbacks. When you gain a sense of dispassion, you can begin to take apart these things that are disturbing the mind. You learn to let go. Now, while you're doing this, there will be a sense of self hovering around all what you're doing. After all, you see that you are capable of doing this and you will benefit from doing this. And there's the you who's watching over the whole process to make it as skillful as possible. These are your three basic senses of self. 
They're all strategies for happiness. The problem is in the past they were awkward and often would make bad choices. But as you start making better and better choices by sticking with the Buddha's program, those strategies become more skillful. And as you start taking apart your attachment to the things that disturb the mind, get in the way of the happiness of your concentration, get in the way of the happiness of your discernment. You begin to reflect these skills that have been lurking around, this sense of self that have been lurking around, these strategies. They're made out of the same things, made out of feelings, perceptions, thought constructs, a sense of the form of the body, your consciousness. So when you start taking apart the things that disturb you, you find that it begins to have an effect on what goes into making up your sense of self, who you are, who's doing the practice. It's like an avalanche. As the unskillful things get sloughed off, they begin to eat into your sense of self. You realize that you'd be better off letting go of some of the old ways you have of holding on. This is what you've been actually learning all the way along, simply that the focus was not on the self. You're not resolved on the self. You're resolved on being skillful. But the practice of getting more skillful begins to eat into the unskillful parts of yourself. As you see that you've been engaged in eye-making and mind-making around these things. And so you allow yourself to let go of a lot of things that otherwise you might not have been able to let go of because they were attached to a sense of self. Now you see them in the light of the question of what's skillful to do, what's not skillful to do. What should be developed, what should be abandoned. And that's how you let go of craving for becoming and craving for non-becoming, by taking a middle approach. Are you changing the framework of the questions? You want to be resolved on right resolve, not resolved on yourself. But being resolved on right resolve will get you to a place where you're free from the limitations of all your eye making and mind making in the past. The Buddha gives the image of a dog tied to a leash, and the leash is tied to a post. You know, no matter how much the dog runs around, it's just going to run around and around that post. In the same way, you begin to realize that everything you've done has been running around form, feeling, perceptions, thought constructs, consciousness. No matter how much variety there's been in your past lives, or in this life, or in potential future lives, it's going to be made of these same five things. So we learn how to let go of them in one area, in other words, the thoughts that would pull you into doing unskillful things, the urges that would pull you into doing unskillful things when you start letting those go. You find that you let go of a lot of things that go a lot more deeper. So we resolve the issue of self, not by focusing on self. I've been focusing on the question of what's skillful and what's not, and trying to develop those qualities of being heedful, ardent, resolute. Let that become the center of your attention. And the issue of self and not self will get settled on its own. Keep your focus, keep your center at the right spot. This is strategic.
And it's only by being strategic that you can take care of issues like this and not get sucked into their terms. That's the way you get free.